Welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson, and today we're going to be working on our double wall basket. It has two walls, an inside and an outside, which allows us to create a pattern inside as well as outside. A really pretty basket, and it's really sturdy. The material and cut pattern for this basket is as follows. You're going to need half inch flat, cut 16 pieces, 30 inches long in natural. Also cut 16 pieces in dyed, your color choice, also 30 inches long. You'll need an additional half inch flat for your weavers, quarter inch flat dyed, half inch flat oval, number seven round, three millimeter cane, and 5.5 millimeter cane. To get started on this one, I've already laid out my base here to save time, but I want to tell you what I did. First of all, we're going to mark our centers on the right side, and then we're going to have our rough sides together so we have a smooth side on both the inside and the outside of the basket. So like we've always done, line up your ends here, draw up your finger, mark your centers on the right side. You only have to mark it on the dyed one because you can line this one up with your natural piece. They're going to lay on top of each other. And then you're going to weave that over and under, going this way, eight pieces this way, and they're laying on top of each other. So that's why we need the 32 pieces. Draw this in, and I measured it. I spaced these a half an inch apart. And I used just a scrap piece of my natural to do the measuring with, the spacing with. When you get finished, this should measure seven and a half, which it does, by seven and a half this way. Now I can take off my spoke weight. I'm not going to need that to hold it down. And here I have a piece of that 5.5 millimeter cane, and I'm going to bring it up here, and I'm going to create, this is my stabilizing row to hold everything together, and I'm going to use this and we've did this once before in another basket. And I had you twist this so we had a right side and wrong side up. But this time we're going to do it a little different. I want you to come in here and put like a kink on it. It's a half a turn. And I'll show you as I do it. I'll try to talk you through it. It's kind of a half a turn. And there's a little kink right here in the corner. That allows me to have both right sides up. And I kind of wanted that look for this basket because I want the inside to be real pretty. It's the kind of a basket that somebody's going to pick up and look inside and go, oh, because it's so pretty in there. Okay. Again, I've got, I'm doing that little kink, that half a turn allows me to have both sides up. And this is just an over-under weave. Pull it tight. It would be real difficult to put twining on this one because of the two layers of reed. So I find this is the best way to finish this one out. Watch your spacing if it shifts. Just take a minute and put it back together. Again, that little kink on the corner. Now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to weave it right on top of the piece that I started with. And it should have been a hair longer. Can you see this? This really needs to come across and hide here. I would do it over if I had time. If yours does that, make sure it hides under that one. It needs to hide and cross over four of them. But for time's sake, I'm going to leave it this time. We're going to come in here and we're going to upset your basket, and that's simply bending up the dyed reed only. Leave the natural reed out. That's going to be our second wall on the outside. And I also like to take four clothespins and pin up my corners. You'll need four of them, one for each corner. Work your way around. On this one that it crosses on top of, it bends up real easy. On this one, you'll see that I'm putting a little press there so that this edge is alongside of my caning edge. And work our way around. I'm going to work, pick up speed a little bit to get around this. And again, by clamping up my four corners, it helps me when I go to shape the basket. Those clothespins just really help in shaping. Okay, now I'm going to use 
half inch flat and put in three rows of half inch flats. Here's my half inch flat. Now I want you to remember to always put the right side facing into the basket so this is a little different. Now I have a hard time working with this flat on that row so what I do is pick this up, lay it on the side of the table, pick up these pieces and just pull them down and kind of hold them there. Then I'm going to come in here, the right side is facing in, the wrong side's facing me, and I'm just going to weave around. And I'm going to put those close pins back up here for a couple of rows to hold everything together. Give it a turn. This is going to be your hardest row because you're trying to shape it. You're working with this extra reed that we don't need right now. You're getting it out of the way. And you're also trying to do this first row and over under weave. I go around the corner, bring up those pieces at the corner. I'm picking up only my dyed reed. I'm not picking up any of the natural. I'm going to put an extra close pin here, hold that together. those down. Watch your corners. There's a tendency to really pull tight at those corners and you don't want to do that. You want to have a nice round corner that follows your base. And I'm almost back to where I began. Again I'm pulling down these natural pieces and then I'm just going to hold them down here. I have a long piece here. I'm going to just kind of estimate what I need and I'm going to cut it. And I don't have to work with this long piece getting this first row in. Over under basic weave. Okay, one more side. and overlap four. This is where I began. I'm hiding this end and overlapping four. I'm going to cut this one to hide under this spoke here. That's my fourth spoke over. Okay, I have to weave two more rows. Again, I want the wrong side facing me. I gave it a quarter of a turn. If you noticed, I, I turned it a quarter so that I'm not stopping and starting at the same place each time. I'm starting and stopping at a different side each row. And it still looks sloppy, but I'm trying to pull this together now and pack this row in tight. By the time I get to the third row, it'll really start taking a nice shape to it. This one comes forward. Remember your pink ones? or your dyed ones are going to be the ones you're going to work on on the inside of your basket. Pack these rows in tight. Use lots of close pins if you need to. They're really good for holding things together. Oops. And I got one down. Here's That one needs to go up. Over, under. I'm not really fighting with this as much as it probably looks. It's not that difficult. It's just trying to hold it together and get this couple of rows done. That first row is your, probably your hardest. The second row is going in much easier already. And I'm back to here. Back in my rows. By that third row, you'll be able to pack things in tight and it'll start really taking a nice shape. Okay, I'm back where I started. Remember I'm going to overlap four right on top of where I wove before and cut it underneath that fourth spoke and hide it. Okay, go ahead and put in another row because we want three rows in here. And I've already done that, and I'm going to talk you through some of this. What I did here. 
here I've got my three rows in down here. See, I have three rows. Then I have put in a row of the caning, and again I'm using the 5.5 millimeter, that's the wider caning. And I'm using that, and I'm, as I wove those rows in, I wove them so the back of the caning was facing me, and it feels a little different because you want the inside to have the pretty side of the caning. So then I, wrote, I wove a row of caning, and then a dyed quarter inch caning, quarter inch, caning, quarter inch, and I ended with my caning up there. Then I'm going to put in three more rows with my half inch flat, the same thing again, just like I had been doing, and make sure the wrong side is facing you. As you weave these rows around, set your basket down like this and look at your corners, maybe after the third row of the quarter inch on the bottom. Look at your corners. Make sure you're not pulling it in too tight. It's real easy to start pulling those corners in, and then you're going to have a basket shape like that, and that's not what we're after. So just double check those rows. Make sure we have a nice, um, even base going on it. This one, I have already woven the sides up. And I'm going to talk you through the sides here. Again, we have our three rows. We have our caning, which doesn't look like caning because it's facing backwards. Your dyed caning, so we have three rows, pardon me, four rows of caning interwoven with three rows of the dyed. Three more rows, and then I did the caning, dyed, caning, dyed, caning again, and finished with three rows up here. Now make sure your base is nice and wet, and now we're going to start weaving that outside wall. And I did that with half inch flat. I did, again, I did three rows to match the base of the, the one inside pattern. Always start on the outside. I'm on an outside weave. Make sure now that your half inch flat, the right side, is facing you because now we want that to face outside. And I also pinned up my corners on this first couple of rows. The inside basket has now become a mold for my outside weaving. So I am pushing this and doing it gently. I'm not pushing hard, but I'm pushing gently this half inch flat row so that it lays right up next to the inside basket. And I'm still going to put my corners on. Pull it a little bit tighter so I have a nice smooth round corner and I'm going to work my way around. I'm going to come back and put that corner on. That helps me shape. And I'm back to where I began. Before I do that overlapping, I'm going to put that corner on again. Now I'm overlapping where I began. Weave right on top of it, overlap four, and cut that off, and that piece is going to hide under there. Give the basket a quarter of a turn, and start your next row. Start your next row on, on, on after you do your quarter turn. And again, I'm going to uh, always start on top and weave this around. Okay, I'm going to uh, get the next set out. Now I'm going to get the next basket, and here I've already done the three rows. And you see how they've packed in tight, how that third row just kind of brings it all together? Now we're going to start this twill design on the outside, and it's a very basic twill pattern. I know we've done this pattern before, but it's so pretty, and it just kind of worked into this basket so nice. So it's a good one to add this one on to. Starting anywhere, I'm going to go under two, and I'm back weaving, and I'll be over two. That's just an easier way for me to do it. I'm going to make sure you're on top, and I've clipped it with a, a clothespin to hold it in place. And all the way around, I'm going to weave over two, under two. So I'm over two, under two. This first row is real easy. It's just over two, under two. And if everything comes out right, if you haven't made any mistakes, you will be right on the very same weave that you began on. Take off your clothespin, 
and hide that end under there. Weave over two. I'm going to be under two, and I'm going to weave this a little farther. I'm going to hide it under this one here. And see how that hides on there? Make sure the right side of your reed is facing you. Okay, this piece is long enough. Give it a turn. Now, to begin the twill, you're going to come in here on an over two and go between them. Back weave two, and I'm going to be on top of this one right here. So I went between here, we're on over two, go between them, back weave two, back weave over two, and clip that in there to hold its place. Then continue on with your over two, under two pattern. And I've had my students that have had trouble doing this twill say that this is the easiest way for them to remember how to begin the next row. Over two, under two, all the way around. And of course you're doing an opposite two of what you just did that first row. It's not really an opposite two, but it's not the same two. And you're going to come across here and again weave right on top of where you began and hide this piece over here. I'm going to do another row because I want to make sure you understand what I'm doing. Find my right side so the right side is facing me. It's got a bend on it. Let's get rid of that end. Okay, again, I have two over here. I'm going to weave between those two over. I'm under two and I'm over two, weaving back to the left. And if you're left-handed, you can just reverse this pattern. It'll still work out for you. Over two, under two. And as I weave this up, it's creating like a stair step. A real pretty twill pattern. Over two, under two. If you're interested, um, I do have a dye sheet that I can send you if you just want to drop me a line on dyeing reed. You notice my reed in here is not, it's not bleeding at all. I'm real pleased with it. Over two, under two. So drop me a line and I'll send you a dye sheet on how to dye read some tips on it. I have a real pretty color here. Okay, and hide that end. Now you're going to finish weaving. There's a total of 16 rows. Here I have 16 rows of the twill, so follow the twill up for 16 rows. Then I have three rows again of the half inch flat. And I'm going to that basket now. So we're going to set this one off. Now as I bring out this next basket, you can see that I finished the twill pattern. There's 16 rows and then three rows of the half inch flat. Isn't that a pretty uh, pattern that that basic twill pattern makes? Come inside the basket and cut off all of your pink or all of your dyed reed on the inside of the basket. Every one of them gets cut off. And on the outside of them, if the weaver goes in front of it, it's going to get cut off. If the weaver goes behind the half inch spoke, you're going to leave the spoke on. Come over here and we're going to cut that one off. I have them all cut off now. Now we're going to bring this half inch one over and we're going to tuck it. And as you work these, make sure that each one of your, your spokes, they're together. They're, they're right together, the half inch, uh, the dyed, and the natural. Come in here and you're going to, uh, let me find my tool. And we're going to come in here and we're going to tuck this spoke down in. And you're going to need to do this on all of them. It's going to take me a minute here. And work it around. If the length is too long, cut it off. And tuck it right down in there. Actually, it would be much prettier if it was tucked into this row. And then down into your, the rest of the rows of weaving. like so. Okay, finish tucking them and we're going to go ahead and get ready to put our rim on next. Now that we have everything tucked and cut, we're ready to put our rim on. And for the rim I've used half inch flat oval. And remember we come in here with a, um, a sharp knife and we're going to whittle down about three inches in here. And then you're going to place this on, starting on one side, and work it all the way around. 
use clothespins to hold it on and cut it off where your overlap was. Come in here and whittle back some of this on the back side so that it will lay next to itself real flat. Repeat that step for the inside. I've already done my whittling. This is where I've done this overlap. I'm going to do it just a quarter of a turn away. The other overlap. That way if there's any excess space left in this rim, I'll be close to working it out. Work it around and fit it right next to each other. We're going to put a little bit different rim on this. I have here number seven round. I'm going to come in here and slide this under. First of all, I put an angle cut on this so that when I come back around, um, I'm going to join my two ends by butting them. I'll put an angle cut on the other side also. Take your caning, and we're using the uh, three millimeter cane. Put a point on it so it'll travel. I'm going to come up in here, right side facing the basket, loop it around. I know we've done this before, but we'll just do it again as a refresher. Come back in here. Because I've lined everything up, I should be able to go right through both uh, walls of my basket, right through to the other side. And give that a tug. Repeat that step again going right on top of the reed we just did and leave that little tail hanging on the outside. Now I'm going to bring in this number seven round. Okay, and pull this through. Now as I'm doing this, instead of coming right straight across, I'm going to loop this around twice. My caning just broke. I'll just continue on. Loop it around twice, give it a tug, and come across, and I'm going straight down in here. So I have two loops joining this together, and I need to pull everything tight so that's going to come in there together tight. Let me put another point on this end down here so it'll travel better for me. And go back in between your next two spokes to the right. Slide that right in through there. And again, take some time and pull all of this tight, working this in. Make sure your little loops here are um, equal in space. Try to keep it nice and neat. And we're going to go through here again once and twice. Pull everything tight. Pull these loops tight. This, this is going to take you some time. This is not a fast um, lashing border to do it all. Everything needs to be spaced and tight as you work it. So you're going to spend some time on it, but it's well worth it. It's a pretty, pretty border. You come in here, open that space up, and keep right on going. Okay, pull it tight. Watch your spacing on everything. And then loop it twice and continue right on going. Then when you get to the end, and you're going to butt up these two ends, by the time I get over here, I'm going to be, um, this is going to be tighter, and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put on an opposite cut, angle cut, so that these two pieces butt up on top of each other. And we're going to end it, that'll hide the end just like that. So work that pattern around. Take your time, make sure you get two loops in between each one, and work that pattern around. Next week, we're going to be working on our apple basket. And this is one that is worked on a mold, has a nice uh, Nantucket base, worked on a Nantucket mold, but it's not a Nantucket basket. The top is much different, and that's what we're going to be working on. Has a nice added swing handle. Sure look forward to seeing you next week. I've really enjoyed working with you. Have a safe week. Bye-bye.